Hey guys and welcome to this video. So in today's video I'm going to be testing out some brushes I got off of Amazon and when I bought them, and I think they still are, the number one best selling brushes on Amazon. They had four and a half stars and each brush comes out to about 75 or 78 cents a piece. So I had to try them because I know those AOA Studio brushes that I tested out for you guys that are one dollar a brush have been sold out forever so I wanted to find more ridiculously cheap brushes and see if they were good. I'm going to go through each of the 14 brushes quickly, give you a little bit of an overview and a demo of each brush, and then give you my final thoughts at the end of the video. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the first brush. Okay, so apologies in advance because these are all going to be dirty because I just used them. And I did want to mention that these came in just like a plastic bag, nothing fancy, and that they smelled really, really chemically when I first opened them. But they actually said that on Amazon that these might have a little bit of a factory smell or chemically smell when you first get them. But why? wash them and the smell goes away. So I have already washed these. The smell is gone, but that is a little bit of a weird thing to note with these brushes is that they do have a little bit of a chemical smell when you first open them. So let's go ahead and start with the face brushes. So the first brush that I used was my favorite face brush. It is the face round brush. So it looks like this. It reminds me a lot of a smaller version of the Morphe M439 brush or a bigger version of the Real Techniques Expert Face Brush. This did a really good job of blending out my foundation. I could see this being really good for cream blush, cream contour. It's a really, really nice size. The bristles are densely packed. I don't have a bad thing to say about this. I think it's a really, really good foundation brush and it's crazy that a lot of times you can spend $10 on just one brush and this is just one of the 14 brushes but I was really 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 impressed with this brush and I finished blending out my foundation with this brush this is the flat top brush the flat face brush and again I was really impressed with this brush it reminds me of the Sigma flat top kabuki brush I would say these two were my favorite face brushes and they don't feel like super high quality it's definitely synthetic hairs so it's not Sigma level quality but for a good starter foundation blending brush these are both fantastic Fantastic. And I didn't really have anything to use this brush for. This is the Face Flat Angled. You could also use this for blending out foundation. This is basically the same thing as the other one, flat top, but it's just angled. So if you prefer to have an angle when you're blending out your foundation to get into the different crevices of the face, I think you would really enjoy this. But there's no real difference between this brush and that flat top one. It's just a different shape. And then this is the Face Angled brush. This is basically the same thing as the first brush I talked about, but it's also angled. Angled. And I tried this out with a powder contour because I wanted to see if any of these brushes would be good for actual powder products But you really have to just pat it in because the bristles are so densely packed So I would stick to cream products with pretty much all of these face brushes But this again same level of quality as that first brush I talked about could also be used for foundation cream blush cream contour or in a pinch You could use this for blush or bronzer and then this last face brush is the face tapered brush This was my least favorite face brush definitely. I know all of these are synthetic but this just felt the most synthetic. It said you could use this to blend out concealer and that's what I tried to use it for but I really felt like it was just picking up the product and not doing a really good job of blending it out and when I tried to push it into my face it didn't give as much as I wanted it to. It's so tightly packed that it's almost too firm to be able to blend out especially underneath the delicate eye area so I was not a fan of this brush whatsoever. And then the other brush that was a complete miss for me was their brow brush. I liked it at first because it does have a spoolie and a nice little angled top But this angled top right here is just way too soft You need your brow brush to be somewhere between too firm to where it's going to deposit too much product and too soft to where you don't have control over where the product is actually going and this leaned on the no control side of the spectrum This was the only other one aside from that base one I just showed that was a total total miss in the collection and then these three blending brushes don't actually have have names on them so I'm gonna talk about them all together these were the highlight of the collection the thing that was missing in the AOA studio brushes that I got was that every eyeshadow brush felt like a concealer brush so so tightly packed all the bristles were super dense these brushes these blending brushes are 
awesome. I was so pleasantly surprised by these, I can't even tell you. They're so fluffy and soft and remind me of like the Wet n Wild crease brush. They did an amazing job of blending the eyeshadow through my crease and they look really, really nice. That's the other thing I want to say about these brushes. It has kind of a matte rose gold top and then a black bottom with a little bit of silver writing. So the look of these brushes is absolutely beautiful and the quality of these blending brushes was the highlight of the collection by far. Then this next one was the concealer brush. I tried using it as a concealer brush to clean up my brow bone and I just was not impressed. But as a packer brush on the lid, it did a really good job of picking up the product and depositing it. This type of a synthetic brush does really well with super shimmery shades like what I used it with as well as like the ColourPop pressed shadows. These will really get the pigment out and hold on to it as you deposit it onto your lid. Definitely a miss for a concealer brush, but as an eyeshadow packing brush, super impressed. And then this brush was kind of a strange size. It's not an eyeliner brush and it's not an eyeshadow brush. This was a detail concealer brush, which at first I thought was going to be kind of useless, but I used it to kind of pinpoint different spots on my face that I wanted a little bit more coverage. And I could definitely see myself using this for that purpose again, because it's so tiny, you're not going to pack on a whole layer of concealer to a whole area of your face. You can really pinpoint different spots on the face where you have maybe blemishes or scars like I do. So it wasn't my favorite brush, but I could definitely see a use for it. This next one, this kind of pencil brush, was the only other eye brush that I was just not a fan of. Again, very similar to the tapered face brush. It was too tightly packed. I felt like it was pulling at the lower lash line too much and wasn't blending out the shadow. It was just straight up depositing it and I had to go back in with another brush to kind of blend it out and smoke it out. So this one was a miss, but if this is your first set of brushes and you don't have any sort of a pencil brush, I could see this being useful. But as a standalone brush compared to other drugstore pencil brushes like the e.l.f. smudge brush, this was a miss for me. But this eyeliner brush was a surprise for me. I was not expecting to like it. It looked really, really flimsy. Because it has a little bit of an angle to it, I could kind of lay it down along my lash line and it did a lot of the work for me. And it's so, so thin that you can get as thin of a line as you want or you can thicken it up as you go. I could also see this being a really great brush to create a wing because it does have that angle to it and it's so 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 tiny. So this was a win in the collection for sure. And then this last brush is what I used to apply my lipstick. This was a lip brush. This was nothing super special but it did the job. I could see myself using this as a lip brush or as another kind of pinpoint concealer brush because it is so small. So overall I did like this brush. So that's kind of the quick rundown of each individual brush but as far as my final thoughts go on this whole line as a collection first of all I love the packaging like I mentioned I think it looks really high-end this matte rose gold is absolutely beautiful and I think what you're gonna get out of this collection most notably are some really good foundation brushes and some awesome blending brushes but what's missing from this collection in my opinion are number one something to apply powder products with there's nothing to really apply powder all over the face apply powder contour, powder blush. So you would need to have those brushes already in your collection, as well as some sort of a highlighter brush if you do enjoy applying highlighter. These face brushes, I would say, are only really good for cream products. And then even though there were some misses with the eye collection, the pencil brush and the eyebrow brush, overall, especially the blending brushes, were incredibly, incredibly impressive. So I would say my favorite brushes were the face round brush and the face flat brush as well as these three blending brushes. These actually kind of blew me away. They remind me of other brushes in my collection that I really, really love. So just for these five brushes, I would pay the $10.99 because that comes out to what a little over $2 a brush. And then you're also still getting nine other brushes that you could use or not use, but it's still worth it in my opinion just to get this set of brushes. So overall, I was really, really impressed by this collection. I would say if you're a beginner or someone that just wants to build up your brush collection, this is definitely worth the $10.99 or $0.75 cents a brush in my opinion. And not to mention, if you have Amazon Prime, it's free one-day shipping, so you can't beat that. So that is gonna be it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did and let me know if there's any other brush sets that you want me to review and I'd be happy to do it and I will see you guys in my next video.